police profiles. I'm Officer Bob Frudenberg of the Suffolk County Police Department's Community Relations Section. Today we're going to be talking about prom nights and keg parties. And with me are two uh, experts in driving while intoxicated arrests. Uh, they're part of the DWE enforcement team. And Officer Larry Bartley, welcome to Police Profiles. Thank you. And Officer Tom Winsper, who uh, worked with me in the 5th Precinct That's when right. I was on the road. Welcome to Police Profiles, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, we've got a kind of a serious, tough uh, topic to discuss, and it's prom nights. Uh, what's the problem with uh, prom nights? Well, mostly uh, is the long hours of partying that goes on at prom night. A prom night is one of the problems, and the many parties that go with it during those long hours, the availability of alcohol, um, the overindulging of alcohol, mm -hmm. and ultimately uh, that leads to driving. We're uh, talking about 17 and 18 year olds and... Yeah, primarily, yes. yes. And the legal drinking age is 21, 21. Even to that's possess correct. now. And, that's right. Uh, it's 21 that's and uh, so we've, we've got a problem. Uh, between the two of you, uh, 950 DUI arrests, yes. driving while intoxicated arrests, over 900 arrests? Around, yeah, around 900 for myself. Um, so you guys are experts in this, and uh, we don't need the business. No, uh, not, not, no. Not, no, not that type of business. I mean, I, I, I've talked to guys who've gone to these fatalities, and I've been to some fatalities very often. It's DUI. Uh, uh, it's caused by a DUI. It's alcohol-related. Uh, and we see that. Uh, our sector car operators may have somebody under arrest after a uh, person has killed somebody. In a, in a, and very often the person is a younger person, uh, yes. a, new, a new person in, in the drinking area. Uh, talking about prom nights, going to talk about cake parties in a couple of minutes. Uh, you're part of the DWE uh, uh, enforcement team. What about this general ob obligations law? This is something that uh, I don't think our audience is, is familiar with. Tom? Well, the general obligations law, basically, what it is is, is the, if you as a parent decide that you're going to do a favor for your kids, I, and I quote favor, by giving them a graduation party and supplying alcohol at this party. And this is just one of the, an example. And there's the youngsters there from graduation, 17, 18, 19 year olds, who again are not legal to drink in New York State. Uh, drink, become intoxicated with your knowing that this is going on. Go out and injure themselves, someone else, or personal property. You as the parent are responsible for that individual. Uh, even though they're not related to you by any means, you know, besides a friend of your son or daughter, you're responsible for their actions. So if you've given out the alcohol, the beverage, you, you're connected to that beverage. That's correct. And not, not only does Likely it, so. <laughs> not only does it go if you supply it at your house, but if some kid comes up to you outside the 7-Eleven parking lot and they do me a favor, buy me uh, you know, these beer balls or a case of beer, and you do it, you also could be held responsible. Yes, you know, that, that's something the audience said, like, uh, you know, almost like uh, an instant replay on that. If, if you get connected to that alcohol by supplying it to someone underage, you stay connected with it. Yes. Uh, so anything that they do, whether it be criminal negligent homicide, right, manslaughter, yeah. assault. And it can go all the way back to the supplier. If somebody was to buy a keg or, or, or uh, cases of beer at a, uh, a wholesaler, this can go all the way back to them. Mm -hmm. The injured parties can bring suit all the way back, not only to the people that bought it and gave it to them, but it can go all the way back to where did you buy it? You bought it at Joe's Wholesale Beer Place? Under the law, they can go all the way back there and seek uh, yeah, This is a very, very lit litigious society that we're in, and people will sue for just about anything, and can sue for just about yes, anything. that's true. But I like this particular law because it... It puts responsibility where I think it belongs. And you said, in quote, a favor. Uh, you know, when I was 18 in New York State, I was permitted to drink. Yes. I don't know if anybody was doing me a favor by allowing me to do that because uh, I don't, now, in hindsight, I see how dangerous it was. Oh. Uh, some of my peers at the time got into problems. E even though they have raised the drinking age to 21 in New York State, we see, uh, both Larry and myself, uh, doing the patrol and the arrests that we do, I would say somewhere 10, 12 percent of the arrests that we make are still under the age of 21. So yeah. somebody's buying them beer, somebody's selling them beer or supplying them with beer. And that's 10 percent is a lot and, and it's just 
you know, it, sooner or later something's going to come back and somebody's going to get involved in a major suit and it's going to cost them, you know, their house or all their property, whatever they own, it's going to cost them everything. Yeah, not to, not to mention the fellow who wakes up in the precinct cell block and finds out that he's killed somebody. Yeah, that's true. And goes to pieces uh, because he's got to live with that for the rest of his life. And that's happened. Oh, many I, times. You know, it's, I know it's happened many times. Unfortunate. But getting back to the prom nights, now they go out partying, there may be three or four couples. I saw the 10-hour ad for the limo, you know, uh, $200 off in the local papers right. yes. for the 10 hours. Uh, prom nights are coming up. Uh, what about the limo drivers? Uh, they, they're kind of between the rock and the hard place, in a manner of speaking. Well, uh, the limo happens? driver's responsibility is to pick up their fare and to get them to and from wherever their destination was responsibly and safely. The parents have to make sure that they check with the limo drivers. And that their responsibility is not to uh, let these kids stop at a 7-Eleven and buy alcohol, however they may get it, even being underage, to bring it into the, the limo. Their responsibility is that, as a driver, strictly that. And Because um, they're responsible for that limo. When those children, absolutely. 17, 18 years Correct. old, are in that limo, so the, most limos have alcohol available. They have a little bar. Yes, uh, they, they do, but uh, to the best of my knowledge, anyway, it's from prom nights when they're underage in the vehicle. The bar should the, not only should be locked, it should be removed. The, the alcohol should be removed from the limo. Uh, the driver is, is the boss of that limo. He's the, he's the captain of the ship, so to speak. What he says should go. And the parents should make sure that that's the case, that there's, he doesn't allow them to drink in the limo, doesn't allow them to stop along the way and buy alcohol to drink in the limo, and definitely doesn't supply them with any. He, he might be tempted to be the, the good guy, the nice guy. Right. You know, hey, I was a kid once, too. You know, hey, we're, we're going to go out, we're going to party because you graduated from high school. Uh, there's a temptation to do that. that and you said, I want to get back to the favor that the parents are doing mm. for their kids. Uh, it really isn't. Uh, we're the guys who have to sometimes knock on the door and say, does so-and-so live here? Or did so-and-so yeah, -so live correct. here? You know, yeah, yes. you've you got to be yep. careful the way you say that. Uh, and we don't like doing that. That's one of the most distasteful jobs that I've ever had to do is, is tell somebody that their child was dead. Um, well, that's all part of the risk is what you really I'm getting, oh, yeah, I want to get, I want to no. see, I want, this is about police. And I want people to know that we see the bad parts we're not, we don't think anybody's doing anybody a favor when they give a uh, 17 or 18 year old something to drink. They're not doing them a favor at all. The kids say, oh, give me a break. Uh, you know, my friend Joe's parents gave him a party. They had beer and everything. And, and it was everybody had a good time. Maybe the kids had a good time. They all got drunk. Who knows? I don't, you know, but that's not a favor. You're not doing them any, any good. You're not helping anybody by, by supplying the kids with alcohol. And you're putting yourself and your, your kid's future and your own future as a parent in jeopardy, you know, because you could lose everything you've worked all your life for. Sure, you could and lose you, your child. You have to remember important. that this is not, we're not only talking about alcohol in relation to driving. A kid could get drunk, go out and assault somebody without having nothing to do with driving, and still the parents would be responsible. You let's, know, let's get to the cake parties. Now, we're talking about prom nights, but a lot of times this time of year there are cake parties because of graduations or six sweet 16s or something like that. Again, we're talking about young people, 17, 18, 19 years old, who are being, I don't want to say encouraged, but, but they're, they're facilitated in getting beer. And, and, and people, I always hear this, it's only beer. What is it going to do? You know? Um, What's the problem with the, the, now you guys are really in highway patrol, part of the highway patrol section, you're a DWE enforcement team, you're doing other things, you certainly have enough work to do. Yeah. Uh, but when we get a call in a sector car, from a sector car for help on a, a keg party, why does he need help? What's the problem? Because the neighborhoods are, most of the time, like what we stated before, the parents think they're doing a favor for the kids. Let's control where they drink and how they drink. But it really, it winds up that there's three, four hundred kids at this party. There is two or three hundred cars parked in the neighborhood. Do the parents start off knowing that that's going to happen, do you think? I don't think maybe, uh, inadvertently they do not. They figure maybe 50 people or whatever, but word leaks out, one thing leads to another, and next thing you know there is a mass of people there, they're drinking, 
We've even had instances where the, p the parents charged the kids $5 to get in the door. Yeah. This is totally illegal. That happened last year. That was the one in Dix Hills, wasn't it, Larry, last yes. year? There had to be, no exaggeration, a thousand kids on this little tiny residential area, and it had to be to go along with the kids, a thousand vehicles parked on people's vehicles front parked. lawns. In, a, mm. in an area yeah. like well, they or them any on, area, really. They parked them on people's front lawns and, and other people's driveways. They were just parking and just leaving them there and walking. And what are you going to do with a thousand cars? You know, they, you make a, they make comedy movies about things like this. Yeah, well, yes. it's not but a it's comedy not really funny, you go. Uh, and, and you'll have maybe ten cops there to a thousand kids. And, and uh, you say they're only kids. Well, some of these kids are, are rather large, and a lot of them are rather unruly because they've been drinking, and it's not easy to control them. Uh, we do the best we can. We try to help out when, when we get called to. Yeah. One, one kid looks at the, the girlfriend of another kid in the wrong way, and all of a sudden you get a what we call a 16, a fight. Yeah. Yes. And now we can't even get to the fight well, to break it up. It's not, it usually doesn't just stay a one-on-one -on -one fight. Next thing you know, it's 50 people fighting in the middle of the street, and you can't get there to, to try to help anybody that's involved. Due to the fact that the, all these kids and the cars are parked there, it's just it's just an uncontrollable situation. Because 950 of those kids, probably, in all, all fairness to the kids, are sensible, res responsible, reasonable human beings, and they're trying to leave. Well, in this residential area, how do you get into that area to prevent somebody from being seriously hurt when they're all trying to leave and the police cars are trying to get in? It's, you don't. Based, that's you the don't. answer. You really can't. It's just right. unless there's another way to get in. There's usually not, though. There's usually one way in, one way out, the main way, and that's blocked by everybody trying to escape or leave, you know, and there we are stuck, you know, not being able to help anybody. And that, that's really tragic, and, and that's why we're doing the show, because really, uh, the word favor came up. You mentioned it several times. You mentioned it several times. Nobody's doing anybody a favor. Um, what happens after they, they make the mistake do you get involved with them? Do you, do you lock up kids on prom night? I mean, here they are in their tuxes, or they just changed from their tuxes into their shorts to go to the beach or to go to breakfast. What? I mean, that seems kind of cruel, you know? Oh, be, well, be reasonable, officer. Well, there, there's a little more to it than that. And, uh, um, I know that. <laughs> um, it, it, needless to say, if we catch them driving and they're intoxicated, yes, they do get arrested. Mm -hmm. And uh, they don't think it's quite fair, give me a break. The, the, the risk that we talked about before, you're talking about possibly taking somebody else's life. You're giving everybody else that has to drive in that night a yes. break. And well, you're giving them a break because they're not going to get killed or hurt somebody going home. Before I forget, and before we run out of time, mm -hmm. alternatives. What should the schools be doing? What should the parents be doing? Are there alternatives to this? Well, there, there is some alternatives, uh, well, I feel anyway, uh, having daughter this year, my own, she's going to a prom, a senior prom this year, and uh, they, they have a, a limo, the same thing, but she knows better than to drink and drive, you know, or, or drive, forget it, but even in the limo, they, it's not allowed, I checked already with the limo company. Um, so the going, parents should check? Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Check with the limo company and let them know that you know as a parent that they're not allowed to serve the kids alcohol, and tell them you know, it's out and of the high question. High schools are doing other things. That they're having parties for the kids, all night parties, right. breakfast right. parties. Uh, they, they rent out facilities. I think these are really creative things for the right. high schools to do. The whole idea of the limo is a good idea. Mm -hmm. If you're going to go into the city or go to these different functions, that's a great idea. But don't use it as an excuse to go out and get drunk and not be able to control yourself. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, if you have any questions or you want to comment on this show or any other show that we do, uh, you can write to Cablevision TV 6, 1600 Motor Parkway, Hop Hog, New York, 11788. And as always, I'd like to thank our guests, Officer Larry Bartley and Officer Tom Winsper okay. and the DWE okay. Enforcement Team. Uh, thank you very much, Cablevision TV 6, for making this program possible, and Peter Kohler, the director of this program. Thank you all very much. <laughs>